Hello everyone. Hello. 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 Hi, Sadiqa. Hi, I'm Grace. Nice to see you. <laughs> nice to see you too. So, welcome to Voice of the Nations. Thank you for joining our program. First of all, could you please introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you for having me. My name is Myra Malloy. Uh, you may know me from 10 years ago from Thailand's Got Talent, and now I live in the States and I work as an actor. Mm -hmm. How's the life uh, from you know having your career in Thailand and then move to the States? Um, I'd say it's been very different um, because I was born and raised here. I feel like I spent most of my form formative years in Bangkok. So like everything I experienced was, you know, as a child. So even coming back this time, everything is so different because just like being older, being able to do things like even just like something as simple as like drinking. It's just like something I've never experienced before while living here. So it's been really different. And yeah, I mean, just like working in the States has also been super different mm -hmm. um, not because I'm an adult now, but also just because like the industry is quite different. Yeah. So it's quite a change. Should you please talk about uh, how did you start your career in Thailand first from the beginning? And then what made you like, what made you decide you would like to pursue your career, especially in the United States? And what are uh, you doing right now? Perfect. Uh, so, I mean, I always have been a singer, like I grew up singing um, mm -hmm. and I started taking lessons. And then the thing that kickstarted my career was doing um, Thailand's Got Talent when I was 13, back in 2011. And winning that really just started my career in Thailand and opened a lot of doors and other opportunities for me to continue to work as a singer and also as an actor. Um, like after Thailand's Got Talent, I did some stage plays, I did some musicals, and then I did an HBO Asia show. And then I just feel like it just kind of had the snowball effect of working in Asia. And then I felt like I definitely wanted to go to college in the States. And I definitely really, like growing up, I've always wanted to live in the States because like my dad is from the States and we would visit every year. And mm -hmm. I really liked it there. Um, but because of like my education and like my life being here I, as a kid, I couldn't really, you know, just like up and leave and like start a whole new life there when I was still a kid. Um, so I feel like when the time came for college and everything, I just kind of like made the decision that I was going to try and start auditioning there and try to like make a, you know, a name for myself there, I think. <laughs> was it easier at first? No, it was actually really hard. I mean, even to this day, I still I still feel like there's a lot of internal struggle and it's still super hard. I, I, I'm pretty sure that it will never get easier. Um, but yeah, it was never easy and I don't think it will ever be easy. But I think I think it's all about like having perseverance and just like believing that one day you'll, you know, be successful or get to do what you love and yeah. <laughs> how how is it uh, how is it like working in the United States? What are the differences between Thailand and the United States? Like, of course, you know the culture is different, and right. in Thailand, people probably would uh, would be more compromised um, or pampered. I think, yeah, I feel like I mean every time I come back, I just realize how nice everyone is and how but mm. and like they just like really care. Um, and are really sweet and there it's kind of like you're kind of there on your own you can't really trust anyone you're kind of like mm. every man for his own out there which is like cool and fine and whatever but I think especially in the entertainment industry it's really different in the sense that I feel like in Thailand it's kind of like people scout you and then choose you and pick you and then like they 
they like shoot you to fame immediately like if they mm -hmm. like your look or whatever and that's like how that goes but i feel like in the states like if you're not if you're not like related to anyone if you're not like a nepotism person or if you don't have like major connections or anything it's just kind of like you're starting from square one and there's no real way to like skip this step so you have to start from the beginning and you have to find uh representation like a manager or and or an agent or both and then from there you just have to keep auditioning and just like hope that you'll be at the right place at the right time and people mm -hmm. and that people take a chance on you and honestly i feel like you need a hefty dose of luck and like serendipity to truly like you know get the roles you want or just like you know keep on climbing up the ladder so yeah i feel like it's very different than here <laughs> <laughs> So let's talk about your work right now in the United States. What have you done? What have you achieved? Um, so the first real job I had was touring um, Miss Saigon, um, the Broadway mm. national tour Miss Saigon. As Kim? As Kim. And that was really fun. And I did that for about a year and a half. Um, and it was just like... An it was probably like the biggest learning experience in my life because we were doing eight shows a week. And on our off days, we were like traveling to a different city or a different state and then like, you know, rehearsing and then doing the show all over again. And I ended up doing like 400 shows in total, which is wow. like the same number, just doing the same thing over and over again. Um, but it was but it's really practicing, fun. practicing, right? Yeah, and I and it, it's true what they say. Practice does make perfect, and practice perfect, does yeah. indeed make you a better actor, singer, whatever you're doing. Like practice will definitely reinforce that. So that yeah. was really great. But then, like I said before, like that also opened a lot of doors and opportunities for me. Like from doing Miss Saigon, um, we like stopped in LA for a whole month at the Pantages, and that's when. Um, casting directors came to see the show and one casting director in particular really loved my performance and and then like helped me find a manager and an agent and that's how and that's why i say i think a lot of it is about you know obviously putting in the work and and being very dedicated but also just being in the right place at the right time where the right people can see you and then if they have faith in you them like you know helping you along the way but that's why i feel like luck play such a huge part um, in succeeding because if you're you can't just be talented and motivated but it's like if the right people don't choose you then you're just you know you're just doing the thing and you're not really the right people and the right time too yeah exactly so yeah mm -hmm. but apart from Miss Science you have your role too in one of the very famous movie would you like to talk about that Yes, so I auditioned for the remake of She's All That in like the thick of the pandemic. And I was just like, wow, this is such a cool project. I would really love to be a part of it. But like, as with every audition, it's just like, you have to keep your expectations low because there's just like way more rejection than, than you know, getting roles. So it's just kind of like, okay, like I'm just gonna do this because it looks really fun. And I'd love to be a part of it, but like I, I'm, I'm not gonna like, you know, I don't, I never think I'm gonna get it. So I just like do the best I can. And then when I found out that I got it, I was super excited. And we filmed it like under a month, and then it came out last year. And and I don't know, it seems like Gen Z really liked it, <laughs> and so that made me happy. And it's just cool to like, I don't know. If you asked me five years ago if this was what I'd be doing, I would just be like there's no way but now that I've done it I mean I still think it's super cool <laughs> and I'm really glad that they took a chance on me so yeah it's he's all that the, he's all um, that mm -hmm. he's all that the remake of she's all that on Netflix and what about other movie um well and right uh right after he's all that I also um was cast in an Amazon new like young adult TV series called Hot Pink. And we did the pilot for that, but 
Unfortunately, it did not get greenlit. It did not get picked up to series, but that was also a super cool experience. Just, you know, being on set and just being a part of a TV show rather than a movie. And I thought mm -hmm. that was really cool as well. And then after that, I've just been auditioning a lot and doing things here and there and just, you know, just hoping that I get the next job. I feel like this is like everyone's life as an actor. It's just like you're just constantly auditioning and hoping for the best and just hope that someone takes a chance on you. So yeah, that's my life. <laughs> you see yourself, what do you see yourself in five, in the next five years and where would you like to see yourself in the next five years? I think I can say where I would like to see myself. Um, I would like to see mm -hmm. myself. I mean, I think my ultimate dream I've said before is just like being able to walk into a movie theater and see myself on screen as like a lead character. I think that would be so cool to be able to like bring my friends and family and be like, look, that's me. I think that'd be so cool. So I think that would be like the ultimate dream. But what do I think will happen in five years? I mean, honestly, I have no idea. I hope I'll still be working um, and doing- In acting? Yeah, I hope that I'll be like in film and TV still and stuff like that. And hopefully, you know, I'll get more and more opportunities. Like that's the only thing I could wish for. But honestly, because of COVID and everything, I have no idea like what's gonna happen in the world and where mm -hmm. that will take us because as we all know, these past couple of years were like totally out of the blue. Yeah. Like no one could have, no one could have surmised that this would have happened on a global scale. So I guess we'll see. Hopefully, no more like, no more like new crazy strain of COVID, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, let's hope because everyone's uh, is sure hoping to. Very I'm sure like, we would like to have our normal life back. Yes, you know. I think so. um, <laughs> but since you start off with uh, singing, and now you're pursuing your acting career, are you still practicing any uh, musical um, activities, anything like that yeah. at all? Absolutely. I mean, I still occasionally audition for some musicals as well, but mostly I. I still do my own music on the side. I like mm -hmm. write and all my own music and I have a full EP coming out soon. I've just been dropping singles lately, so you can find those on Spotify <laughs> under Meyer Malloy if you want. But yeah, I do all this the music like from the ground up myself. Like I have a I use Ableton, I use this music software and I like create everything by myself. So that's like my creative outlet since I feel like acting I'm bringing other people's ideas to life, but for music, it's like, it's all me. So I feel really fortunate that I have that creative outlet mm -hmm. for myself. <laughs> if I ask you, who is your idol? Who would be? Oh, that's so hard. I feel like my idol or like people I look up to, they're always changing, but if for music, I feel like a lot of people have inspired me like, I really loved Flume and Disclosure um, back in college, and that's why I wanted to start producing because, I mean, I thought their music was so cool, and that's why I've dabbled in electronic music and stuff like that. But in mm -hmm. terms of acting, I feel like my idols have always changed. I've always looked up to pretty much, like, people kind of around, like, my age, actually, just, like, watching Lady Bird and seeing, like, Saoirse Ronan and stuff like that. I'm just, like, so inspired by by people like that because it feels attainable i think i think like mm -hmm. of course like i look up to like the big leagues in hollywood like the meryl streeps of the world like i have so much respect for them but i just feel like like the saoirse ronins of the world i'm just like such in awe of them because i'm like wow like if they can do it may maybe i can do it i don't know and i love all the films that they're in so that's another thing I mean, I believe that if you believe you can do it, you can do it. One day you'll be there. Okay, we'll find not. a way for that. <laughs> we'll find a way for that. Yeah, we'll find a way for that. But, um, you know, like for a young girl like you to have achieved so many words on an international stage, it's kind of tough and hard that we have to admit that. 
And there are a lot of many young Thai who would love to uh, follow your path. What would be your advice? My advice, well, I think my number one advice would be to, I don't want to come across as harsh. I want to be inspiring, but mm -hmm. I also want to be realistic. Um, Go ahead. I think the, <laughs> the number one advice would be <laughs> to ask yourself um, your intention and in, in why you're doing it first. Because I think a lot of people think that fame is cool and like riches are cool. But I think that will not sustain um, your career or your uh, motivation because you will quickly realize that it's extremely hard to even get in a room. And every day, like I'm speaking from personal experience, mm -hmm. every day, let's say I audition like 200 auditions a year. I get into the room like maybe five to 10 times. Right. Like it's very minimal. Like the the success rate is so small. Um, so for advice, I want to keep it short and sweet, uh, but maybe not too sweet because I want to be realistic. But basically, I just want to say that I think you have to think about your intention of why you want to pursue a career in acting. And I think like being passionate about it, of course, is like the number one thing and is important and everything. But the reality of it is if if you're just doing it for the fame or the money or whatever, I feel like you won't have the longevity to stick it out. Because honestly, if I was not passionate about what I was doing, I would have quit so long ago because it is so hard. It is really brutal out there. And it's like really demoralizing sometimes because you get more rejections than acceptances. And um, it's, it's just really hard because we're only competing for one role. It's not like a, it's not like a job position where, you know, five people apply and five people can get it. It's like 10,000 people are applying and one person will get it and you can be anywhere in the world. And um, yeah, so it's just really hard. And so you just have to have really thick skin and really learn not to take it personally and just be able to move on and still have the motivation to do so even after you've been rejected. So I think that like the psychology of it is really hard, I think. And like, even now, like I struggle every day with like realizing what I've like my achievements and I struggle with like acknowledging my achievements and also knowing that I want to do more, but also understanding that I've already done well and not to just like dwell on the, cause it's really easy to compare yourself to people above you. You know, it's like, oh, this girl, this person's doing this, this person's doing this. Like, why am I not doing this? And it, and it can, you can really beat yourself up and put yourself in a bad place. So I think my advice would be like, if this is really what, what you want to do, I do truly believe that you can make it if you can learn how to take rejection and move on and just persevere because I feel like the people who succeed are the people who can persevere and stick it out the longest because of course you have to be talented, motivated and all those things to be in the industry. But above all else is you can never quit because as soon as you quit, there are a million other girls or guys or whatever million other people waiting in line right behind you who will take your spot so that's my only advice is if this is what you want to do dedicate your life to it and do not quit <laughs> believe in yourself there. yes and believe in yourself because like it's like any place in the world not just the states like in any entertainment entertainment industry in the world like you have to believe in yourself. You have to believe that there's a reason to keep continuing what you're doing because if you don't believe in yourself, like no one else will. And that's why I feel like fake it till you make it sometimes is true because it's like, of course, as a human being, if you get rejected so much, it's gonna affect your livelihood. It's gonna affect your mentality and your, your, you know, your perspective on life and things. So I feel like, Sometimes you just really need to convince yourself if this is really what you want to do, convince yourself that one day, like, I will get there because I, I, I deserve it and I'm worthy and I work hard and hopefully one day 
someone will see that in me and give me a chance. And so, yes, that is my advice. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think the most important thing is to 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 tell yourself to to actually give support to yourself as well. Yeah, and like being nice to yourself because mm. I feel like I do this a lot where I beat myself up so badly. Like I'm just like, oh my god, they don't, they didn't choose me because it was my fault because it was no. bad. Mm. And it's and the truth of the matter is, ninety nine percent of the time, it's not you, it's them. Like if they have a specific look in mind, if they already pick someone famous, if right. they already casted someone where are just like casting you because they can or are like sending out auditions because why not but they already cast them like you don't know that you don't know the politics behind any of their decisions all you know mm -hmm. is that you did your best and that's right. all you can hope for, that they they liked you and even if they don't this is what i always tell people like even if they don't pick you for the project and but they like you they'll keep sending you other auditions and try to find the right part for you because most of the time it's like if you don't match the look that they're going for in their head mm -hmm. that's all it takes it doesn't matter how good you are how bad you are it's just like a lot of the things are to do with you as a human being it's to do with what they want so don't take things personally be nice to yourself and just you know keep doing it is the main thing <laughs> that's the most important thing believe in yourself and if it and even if you fail you still have to be nice to yourself and that's it have heart yeah. and have pa passion that's, yes and i think that's the biggest thing i feel like even if you feel like you failed that is never true because you've already done your best and just like you are I mean, amazing I feel, like, hmm. <laughs> I feel like even just like having the guts to like start a career somewhere whether it's america europe wherever in the world i feel like that's already a huge achievement in itself right. and and i just feel like people people being me i'm talking about me <laughs> people aka me lose sight of how far they've come and take their past experiences for granted and i feel like it's the human condition where we always want more it's like you always want the next big thing. It, 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 like, it never feels like it's enough. And like, honestly, I should be listening to what I'm saying right now <laughs> because it's like, you need to acknowledge what you've done and be proud of what you've done and realize that right. those things are, are valid and those things are really amazing accomplishments. Even something as simple as getting a really cool audition for a really cool project. And even if you didn't get it, you know that the people working on it saw it and like you enough to to ask you to audition for another thing. Like I think hmm. that's really important, and I feel like you need to you need to have you know maintain this level of positivity and have faith in what you're doing to you know to continue to do the process. <laughs> Mm -hmm. well, that's cool. Thank you very much, Myra. That is quite very much uh, inspiring. Not oh, for just only me, but I'm pretty sure for the audience out there who are watching this um, program right now. Um, I've heard that you only visit Thailand for a short while and you're going back soon. Mm -hmm. yes, you're going back I'm soon. Leaving tomorrow. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. I it was only here for two weeks because it was a pretty like last minute trip and i didn't really have time to like think or plan the trip properly so i was like two weeks is a good enough amount of time for now but i definitely want to come back for longer next time and actually like plan a proper trip where i can like leave bangkok and like go to phuket or like something like that <laughs> escape to the like, beach paradise like, go to the beach or something and just like do more things like this was just so short and um well but isn't Oh, is where is better the beach in Cali or the beach in Thailand? The beach in Thailand. Uh, well, well, I, think, I think the beaches in Thailand are better, but I mean there are some very beautiful beaches in California. But um, in in LA, LA proper, the beaches aren't really nice. They're kind of like nasty. No offense, LA. <laughs> it's not my favorite. 
it's just very overcrowded and like very touristy. But I mean, even Thailand is touristy, but le- at least the water is like so beautiful, you know, like you can see stuff in the water in LA. Clear, like, crystal clear. Yeah, yeah. In LA, it's just kind of like, it's really cold and um, the water looks kind of gross. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. I'm not, I'm not a big beach person, so it's okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, but well, anyway, for today, thank you very much. But before I close program, I will close program. And is it possible if you could maybe just, um, sing a song for us before we yeah. leave i can sing a little song i can sing um part of a song that i wrote that's actually on spotify spotify it not, yes it will not sound the same because that one's like an electronic version but i'll sing mm-hmm. an acapella acoustic version of it oh ah, that's awesome all right so so thank you very much, Myra, for joining our program. Mm-hmm. And that's it for Voice of the Nation. Stay tuned with us from Monday to Friday from 8 to 8.30 p.m. For now, please enjoy Myra Manipatson, Molloy. Thank you very much, Sadika. Thank you. Who <laughs> gave it all, gave it all, gave it all, that you had enough, had enough, had enough, I said. Better luck, better luck, better luck with some other love, other love, other love, with some other love, other love, other love.